Hi everybody! So who doesn't love a steam engine? I mean they're awesome machines, they're brass, they're steel, they're his, they spit, they produce an awful lot of power and they turn a shaft slowly. Of course there's a reason for that, steam engines were originally developed to pump water from mines and for pumping water that's exactly what you need. They're wonderful things and they are the reason the industrial revolution was such a success. Of course as things developed, they were replaced by petrol, diesel and eventually electric. But old ideas, well, they take a little time to die out. And petrol, diesel, electric, it was the same idea. Get it produce a lot of turning force on a shaft. And of course, this was the idea that governed the motor industry for years. British motorcycles suffered from this. They created engines that had a long stroke, lots of power, slow sh turning shaft. Until the Japanese came along and said, hmm, maybe we don't need to do that, maybe we just make a short stroke and make them fast. And of course, that was the death of British motorcycles and the domination of Japanese motorcycles across the world. Because there are different ways of looking at this. Our way tends to come from steam engines and the Industrial Revolution, and we still apply that today. But of course, things are changing, and if you're keeping up with the cutting edge of stuff, what you'll notice is that this idea of driving a shaft with a lot of torque is dying a death. You see it particularly, again, in motorcycles when you're seeing hubless motors. Motors that are being driven on the rim as opposed to being driven from a hub. And there's been a development of thrusters where you're getting a hubless thruster. And there's an obvious and really good reason for that. I mean, you think about torque. Torque is just a lever that moves in a circle. Because if you've got a lever, what you want is a long lever moving a little bit to lift a heavy weight. If you do it the other way around, you have a short lever, a long bit, well you'd be lucky to lift a marble with that. And a wheel, when you're turning a shaft, then you're doing exactly that. You've got a long way to go before you apply your force, so you need a lot of torque on the hub. And that's why torque on the hub is such an issue, because that's changing. People are thinking about it differently now. They're thinking not slow and torque, lots of force on the hub, but on the rim, move it faster, move it with less force, but move it on the rim and not on the hub. And in motors, that is becoming the way of seeing them. And it's absolutely fascinating when you think about it. Now, when people first developed motors, some bright spark thought about giving the motor a spin and hey, presto, it produced electricity. So generators have tended to be a little behind motors, but motors and generators are identical as electrical machines. So now we're thinking about uh, hubless motors. We have yet to really think about hubless generators where what you're doing is looking at speed on the rim as opposed to torque on the hub. Of course, in theory, generators are just like levers. The principles that describe them are, are really quite trivial. When you think about a generator, it's really just amount of wire, strength of field, speed at which it travels. Oh, speed. Interesting. If we can get the coil to travel through the magnetic field, or the magnetic field to travel around the coil quickly, then we'll generate more. Now, if we're looking at an axle that we're driving, in order to do that quickly, we need more torque. But, of course, rims turn fast all by themselves. We don't need to think about the same way of doing these things. If we move away from an axle and to the rim, and, of course, that's exactly what we've been looking at, particularly, incidentally, when we looked at the feather generator. So this idea of speed at the rim instead of torque at the axle has some serious consequences. I mean, if you want to build a pretty chunky machine by using torque of the axle, well, you're going to need a pretty chunky axle. And that means expense. It means expensive tools, it means skills, it means lots of materials. With speed at the rim, everything is so much lighter. I mean, we've been involved in this about, I don't know, four years or so. And we've made these kind of generators from bicycle wheels to old bits of plastic. I mean, these days we're doing a fair bit of 3D printing. But we have made these generators by hand. If you review the videos, you'll see that. So the skill requirement, the material requirement, the engineering requirement is very much lower for a machine that will produce about the same. That, to my mind, 
makes it an ideal machine for anybody who's looking to build a generator at home. But there's also an unintended consequence. This idea of speed at the rim is ideal for adaptation to VAWT style turbines and of course they're brilliant for urban environments where a HAWT is not really appropriate and speed at the rim is a bit more difficult to engineer at HAWT which is frightfully easy at VAWT. So putting those things together, the ease of construction, the cheapness of it, the performance of it and its adaptability to VAWTs to me makes it, well, the perfect solution for home generation. It's the ideal solution for home generation and very much is reflected in things like axial flux turbines. Axial flux is moving towards speed at the rim and leaving behind what is effectively, well, the steam edge of wind turbines. I figure this is going to upset some people, but talk at the hub, at the hub. old style HAWTs represent the outgrowth of the steam age. Moving towards VAWT and speed at the rim is really moving forward, I think. Anyway, that bit's a personal opinion. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.